Thanks Thank a lot, you. Jeff. Great. Um, <clears throat> so, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to introduce the next speaker. It's my good friend and the co-leader of the Sports Groin Pain Center here in, in Aspetar, Adam Weir. He is originally from, from Nottingham, just like Robin Hood. Uh, started in Newcastle, <laughs> went on to the Netherlands where he got married and, and uh, got a, a specialty of sports medicine. And now he is here in Aspetar as sports physician and, and as deputy head of Sports Groin Pain Center and is one of the main motors behind this whole conference. So, please, Adam. Thanks very much, Per. And uh, yeah, fantastic to be here. And I've uh, been looking forward for the last two days to do my talk. So, uh, thanks, Jeff, for your very entertaining uh, presentation. So, the topic today is on manual therapy. Can you hear me okay? Uh, and adjuncts for treating groin pain. Uh, just before I get started, a show of hands. Who here uses or thinks it's a good idea to use manual therapy in uh, groin pain? So I have to convince the other half of you. Okay, uh, I'll share the slides on, uh, on my Twitter afterwards. Uh, and the manual therapy is a subject dear to my heart because I defended my PhD in 2011 uh, on partly manual therapy for the, the treatment of adductor-related groin pain. And the reason to show you this photo is that at my PhD, for which Hans Toll was my co-promoter, we had a guest of honor, and we tricked him into thinking he had to wear a ridiculous hat to attend the conference, and I've been waiting for three years <laughs> to show you a, a picture of Per looking stupid in a hat in uh, Utrecht University, but it was a good day. Uh, the three studies I'll present to you, they form the backbone of the thesis. And actually the story starts back in 2005 when we had a conference on groin injuries in Holland. And this uh, Dutch sports medicine doctor, Erik van der Sander, here seen with the young Johan Krauf, uh, was using for the last 20 years in his clinical practice a manual therapy technique for the treatment of long-standing adductor-related groin pain that he'd learned from the guy in the bottom left-hand corner, Pierre van den Acker, who was for many years one of the therapists of the Dutch national football team. And Erik learned this technique from him. He was very satisfied with his results in daily clinical practice. And after he presented on it at the conference, we decided to start and do some research on it. When I'm speaking about adductor-related groin pain, I'm using the same definition as Per. We say it's long-standing when it's been present for more than two months. You can palpate the pain at the insertion of the adductors uh, on the pubic bone, and you can recreate this insertional pain by doing resisted adduction testing. The study design for this one was simple. Uh, 30 patients who'd been treated were approached with a telephone interview uh, after their treatment to see how they were doing. So it's a retrospective case series. This is what the treatment looks like. So they first have 10 minutes of uh, application of warmth to the affected adductors. And then with the fingers of one hand, you grab hold of the adductors. And with the other hand, you take hold of the heel. The patient lies flat. And you bring the leg out to the side. Uh, this is his daughter. She's laughing, not screaming. But it, you actually here will apply the maximum tolerable stretch and it's incredibly painful, especially if you're injured at that point. So it's not a pleasant treatment to have. After performing the maneuver, you apply some compression on the adductors and you repeat this three to five times in one single session. Following this, they perform two weeks of daily adductor stretching and iliopsoas stretching and application of warmth. Then they'll build up with two weeks of jogging, alternate day jogging. When they can jog for half an hour, they change to two weeks of straight line sprinting, followed by two weeks of training, uh, change of direction and training with the ball. And after that, they'll rejoin the team. 
The treatment outcomes were positive, but as Robert Jans explained to us, beware the retrospective case series. It's inversely correlated with a good outcome. Uh, as was the case here, we had a, a high level of subjective athlete, athlete satisfaction and a high number of athletes who'd returned to sport at or under their previous level. At the same time, in clinical practice, I think the most commonly used treatment regime, as demonstrated by these handsome specimens down at the bottom, uh, is the exercise therapy, which we'll hear about after the coffee break from Christian. Um, and so this was a little bit the grounds to go on to do a randomized control trial where we had a, a kind of head-to-head -head study design with, on one hand, the manual therapy technique and on the other hand, the exercise program. It's important to note that the exercise therapy that we used, the exercises were as close as we could get them to the Lancet paper, but in our study we had less supervision. They were instructed after, uh, at the start of the program, after two weeks at the start of the second module, and after six weeks. And all the rest of the exercises they did on their own. They had to perform the program for at least eight weeks. If they could comport uh, if they could perform the full program after eight weeks without having any pain, then they started at the same time to do the return to running program, which was identical to the one in the manual therapy group. The study looked like this. I saw uh, 100 people in outpatients with uh, groin pain, 100 athletes. So uh, most of my days looked like this. Um, in the end, we had 25 in the exercise group and 29 in the manual therapy group. Three dropped out in each group, so we were left with 22 in the exercise therapy and 26 in the manual therapy group. Here we have an objective treatment outcome. Uh, those with good or excellent means they're back to playing sports at the same level as before they were injured. Uh, and as you can see, in both groups it's a little over 50%. Uh, and there's no difference here between the groups in this objective treatment outcome between the exercise and the manual therapy. But those in the manual therapy group were back in 12.8 weeks as compared to those in the exercise therapy group 17.3, which is very similar uh, to the Lancet paper, which had an 18-week return to play. So to summarize it in one line, we would say the, the neither treatment was better but the manual therapy offered a, a quicker return to play. At this time, people started to ask when we presented this, is this manual therapy just a quick fix? And this triggered us to go on to do a two-year follow-up uh, where we called all the athletes back who'd had the treatment as part of the randomized trial to come back for another follow-up after two years. Uh, published in this little-known journal. And at the end of this, we can say there was no difference in treatment outcome at two years, but in both the groups, there was 30% recurrence. So please don't see today as a, a kind of sales pitch to sell to you the magic of manual therapy. It's not my intention at all. We've got to be realistic about the, the real life results that we get. And one of the things I took home from this, I'll come to the clinical implications later, but was here as a real life demonstration. We've got the same people, including treating, but different study designs. And here, once again, just a note of caution, uh, watch out for very optimistic case series, because I've experienced this firsthand, what happens when you have a good, rigorous study design with proper follow-up. Now we move on to the adjuncts. I won't be talking about the injections because Phil Robinson covered that for us this morning. And when I look around the literature, for the evidence for adjuncts that are used often in clinical practice, the only articles that I could find were actually on groin shorts. So the second half will focus on the use of compression shorts or groin shorts in athletes with groin pain. There's a small randomized trial from New Zealand. Uh, I like the study, it's a simple design. They had 11 athletes who had what they called osteitis pubis. They gave them a, a battery of performance tests, sprinting, side cutting, uh, jumping maneuvers, and they got them to do this with and without shorts. 
they measured their performance during this test battery and they asked them to rate the pain before the, ex <coughs> pardon me, before the exercises and after the exercises. And what they saw is that there was no effect on performance of wearing the groin shorts, but that those, when they had the shorts on, they reported less pain before and after the exercises uh, when they were wearing the shorts. And a possible mechanism for this, a very recent study, uh, again a nice study designed 29 healthy athletes who had to do a cutting maneuver where they ran forwards and then a light flashed and they had to cut to the left or to the right. While they did this, they had a surface EMG done of their reductor longus and they did it wearing two kinds of groin shorts. The all black shorts uh, are called non-directional shorts whereas the directional shorts on the far side they're kind of a little bit reflecting this crossed anatomy that we've seen spoken about so much today. And what they saw with this was that the athletes when they wore these directional groin shorts they had significantly less activity of the adductor longus muscle uh, while performing these maneuvers. So a possible underlying mechanism why athletes with shorts may report less pain. So how do we bring all this together? Uh, for clinical practice, I still see the, the, the use of exercise therapy for me as being the, the, the current gold standard for long-standing adductor-related groin pain. But if we're not getting success with that, I think that the manual therapy is a, a valid alternative. I get very tempted when I see someone with unilateral pain and you put them in the bent knee fallout and they're way shorter on the symptomatic side. Uh, bilateral, where you feel it, that it's short or they're complaining a lot of tightness in the adductor region. And for some amateur athletes who maybe just want to play football once a week, the, going through the process of the eight weeks of strength training is actually just too tough for them to get through, whereas a bit of jogging and running uh, is for some of them a, an acceptable alternative. So they would be the reasons when I would consider using manual therapy in my clinical practice. For the shorts, I think professional athletes who are sometimes forced into a very early return to play or amateur athletes with residual pain we can help them with uh, giving them some, uh, I think, physical but also sometimes some mental support by wearing the shorts. And certainly people who've been out for a long while and lost their confidence, the shorts again, physically but also probably psychologically giving you some support, helping them get their confidence back by returning to play. So to summarize, uh, just once again make the point uh, case series versus randomized control trial take the kind of study that you're reading into account when you're going to uh, read the literature on new treatments manual therapy I think does have a place in the treatment for long-standing inductor related groin pain <coughs> in certain cases as I've highlighted and that as adjuncts I've found both from the evidence but mainly from the clinical practice that compression shorts can be useful in some cases. So thanks very much for your attention. Uh, all right, go on. <laughs>